Hey, Storytime grown-ups, Miss Lisa here from Worthington Park Library. Um, we are going to go ahead and talk about some ideas to go along with the imagination story time. Um, so I have a few ideas, but they're all really open-ended. So you can do almost anything with them based on what you have in your house. So I hope that this one is a really easily adaptable idea for you. Um, so let's go ahead and start with that first one, which is box building. I do not know about your kids, but my kids love boxes. So whenever we get boxes, we love to build things with them. So you can tape a bunch of boxes together to make some robots. Um, we have a friend of ours that has recently gotten into box creations and they have made dragons and unicorns and all sorts of incredible things by taping together some recycling pieces. So they'll save up um, like toilet paper rolls and paper towel rolls, anything like that that you might be recycling and they put it together to make some beautiful pieces. Um, so you can do that. You can also make some, if you have some good size boxes around, you could turn those into things like rocket ships. I don't know if you remember in our story, whoop, I buried it a little bit on my own, on myself there. Um, but in our story, not a box, they are using the box to be a lot of different things. So you can turn it into a spaceship or a boat or a robot body. You can come up with a lot of things to do with it. So hopefully um, you have some boxes around. Hopefully you have a couple markers you can use with it. And if you happen to have any masking tape that you can just let your little one go wild, I know that that extends the activity a lot. When we do the spaceships here at the library, sometimes I'll give them a couple pieces of foil too that they can glue on there or tape on there. Um, we'll also include things like um, paper plates or paper bowls, things like that, that they can make into a steering wheel or a control panel. Um, I try to just provide a lot of things, whatever I can find around and see where, where they go with it. So if you have a couple kids especially and you can let them build off of each other and put one piece together, um, it really is fun to see what they come up with. Another thing is if you don't have a play kitchen, you can pretty easily make a kitchen out of boxes by drawing on top of one with like the parts of the oven. Um, I've turned them into refrigerators here by you know, taping a little shelf inside and turning it into a door. Um, so they can do stuff like that too. Let's see, what else do we have? Block building. Who doesn't love to build with blocks? So whatever kind of blocks you have around, uh, if you have ones that interlock together, if you have magnetiles or something like that, build with those. If you have good old school wooden blocks, lots of fun for building a whole city. Um, so see if you can build a city together or a big fancy house. Um, if you don't have blocks, you can again use small boxes left over from food like mac and cheese boxes or something if you have those around um, and you can build with those instead. And when you're building a city, remember you need to leave space to drive cars. So if you have any play cars that you can drive around that adds to the fun and to the longevity of how long they'll play with the city that they've made. All right, the next idea is doodling games. I don't know if you've ever played any doodling games, but these are really fun for building creativity uh, because you would do something like if I draw just a random scribble, hand it to the child, let the child try to come up with something that they can make out of that scribble, and then they can give me a piece of that they scribbled on and I could try to turn it into something. Um, that can work even really young. Um, as an activity, it's lots and lots of fun. Another idea is trying to just look at something and draw it without looking at your paper or lifting your pencil off the paper. Um, so littler ones can work on that too. Lots of fun. There's a lot of fun activities related to building creativity through drawing and open-ended drawing activities like that. Um, during quarantine, my kids and I watched a lot of Draw Every Day with JJK. And it's an author illustrator. He does the Lunch Lady series among quite a few others. Um, and he is just really passionate about building creativity in kids. And he had daily videos and they're still available on YouTube and you can go in and watch. And they are maybe geared slightly older, but I was amazed at the difference it made in one of my daughters in particular that uh, really likes 
to do things right. She feels very strongly about doing things correctly. And it was so wonderful for her to see him make mistakes, um, embrace it, incorporate it into part of the bigger picture that he was making. Um, so I just, all that to encourage you to try maybe doing some of those activities. He had a lot of fun activities you could do back and forth with your child or that they could do on their own uh, for building their creativity and also practical tips about how to make their drawings look more realistic or more expressive. Lots of interesting information. All right, huge plug for that. <laughs> but do draw, draw together and just make it fun. All right, the next idea is to dress up. If you have dress up activities at your house, great. If you don't have any dress up activities at your house and you can do things like making a paper crown, uh, making a wand, trying to make wings is really tricky. Um, and, but if you have things like that that you can use as dress up, that's fantastic. And then have them try to create a whole story around it. All right, the next idea is Play-Doh. You know I love Play-Doh. All right, one of the things I saw with the Play-Doh is robot Play-Doh activity. So cute. You do need to have a child who is past the age where things go in the mouth that are not food. So <laughs> you, can't, you can't be doing that because she included things like uh, including washers and beads and pipe cleaners that were in the same colors. And then they made robots with, I think, maybe some buttons, too. Lots of fun. Super cute idea. Um, so you can make a Play-Doh tray. If you do not have a child who is past that stage, you can always do uh, safe to eat Play-Doh, like make a homemade Play-Doh, and then include things like pipe cleaners or something that would be a little harder to, to fully eat. And you could make Play-Doh animals. Uh, popsicle sticks also work really well for that. And the popsicle sticks can be the legs and the Play-Doh can sculpt to be the body. So um, just, you know, get creative with your Play-Doh and have your child get creative because that's what we're working on this week. <laughs> and then the last idea is to build a fairy tale castle. So it could either be a spooky fairy tale castle or it could be a sparkly fairy tale castle. And you can have lots of fun um, doing that with what you have around your house. So if you were playing with blocks already this week and you have more time to do block play, that might be a fun activity. If you were playing with cardboard boxes already and you want to build it into a castle, super fun. If you have pipes at home and you wanted to um, do that with sheets to make a big castle, that could be lots of fun too. If you want to do something on a smaller scale and you don't have a ton around your house, I did see a super cute idea where you would pour some water into an ice cube tray and freeze some little blocks, little ice cubes, and then use those to build the fairy tale castle. Um, especially if you are not anti-glitter, cause I'm a little anti-glitter, but you could put some glitter into it too and make all of it super sparkly. All right, I think that's everything I had for this week. I hope that some of these work for you. I'm sorry I don't have anything in front of me to show you, but it was such a week that was dependent on what you have at home that I didn't really have anything I could show you. So I hope that you have some of the stuff to do these activities. If you don't or you need some ideas for using the things that you do have at your house, please let us know. I'd be happy to try to customize these videos to the things you have in your house or more specifically to skills that you're working on. Um, all of these help build our skills, but especially our creativity and our problem solving skills. And those are so incredibly essential as we try to learn to navigate life. So. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will talk to you soon. Bye.